What's up Skate Athletics fam? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to discuss what causes your legs to burn when you skate. And I'm going to show you how to train to improve your onboard stamina as well as your muscular endurance. But before we get to all that, we got to review some basic physiology. Obviously the food you eat. Anytime you eat, your body's going to break down the macronutrients contained in the food, which is known as the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the fats. During this digestive process, the components in those macronutrients will be broken down and released to energy known as ATP. Because the breakdown of this ATP molecule is what eventually leads to that burning sensation. To be more specific, let's look at how ATP is broken down to release energy. When one ATP molecule reacts with one water molecule, the products that form are one ADP molecule, an inorganic phosphate, a hydrogen ion, and energy. This process will happen again, but this time starting with that ADP molecule, and voila, you're gonna end up with more energy. But here's where the problem arises. As that ATP molecule is broken down, those hydrogen ions accumulate, causing a slight decrease in pH, thus creating that acidic burning sensation. Oftentimes you'll hear people say lactic acid is what causes the burn and what makes you sore the next day. However, that's just simply not the case. First off, lactic acid is not actually even produced in the body. It's lactate. And in fact, it's actually the job of lactate to shuttle out these hydrogen ions from your muscles and transport them to different areas of your body. So not only does lactate not cause the burn, it literally tries to diminish it. All right. So that was a very, very simplified summary of an extremely complicated process, but that's the overall gist. If this type of stuff interests you, and as a quick shout out, please go check out one of my favorite researchers, Dr. Andy Galvin. This man will show you everything you need to know about physiology, bioenergetics, progressive sports science. He's definitely on the cutting edge of everything. It's pretty sick, so go check him out. And of course, all citations for the aforementioned information will be down below as well. Well, it may seem obvious, train for strength and endurance. As you get stronger and build more muscular endurance, your muscles get more efficient at recycling that ATP, and naturally, that's gonna delay and diminish the burn. For this video, which would really be titled How to Build Stamina and Muscular Endurance, I wanted to highlight three types of training. Number one, muscular endurance training. Number two, isometric holds. And number three, cardiovascular endurance training. Local muscular endurance is defined as the ability of certain muscles or certain muscle groups to perform repeated contractions against a submaximal resistance. So that's what we'll do. A bunch of reps at submaximal loads. Use this template going forward. I want you to get three to six sets of each exercise with 12 plus reps at roughly 50 to 70% of your one rep max. And most important thing, your rest periods have to be under 30 seconds. As skaters, to get the most benefit out of our training, let's focus on exercises like squats, split squats, RDLs, hip flexor exercises, and basically anything you've seen already on this channel. Feel free to do your workouts using traditional exercise blocks, supersets, or even circuits. It's always a great idea to use circuits during any strength endurance phase. It's a great way to get a bunch of exercises in to just accumulate volume in a short amount of time. I'll provide some easy circuit examples in the description down below. And just a quick tip for your circuits, because rest period is the most important thing, set up all the exercises first and grab some extra weights just in case you need to go up or down during any exercise. As always, use a lot of variety so you don't get bored and whatever works for you is the best way. Isometric muscle action is where the muscle length does not change. During these isometric holds, you'll be holding certain positions for longer than 30 seconds. And honestly, the longer the better. Isometrics will be a great challenge and they'll definitely have you experience a similar burn as we talked about before. You can pretty much choose any exercise for this. Obviously, I'd recommend lower body. That's not the most important part. I want you to focus on how long you're able to hold the position, your posture, and where your intentions are. Once you're in that position, I want you to contract your muscles at 100% effort. Actually focus on what it feels like to contract that muscle and embrace the burn. Studies have shown if you exercise with intentional internal focus, greater benefits can be achieved. A couple good isometric exercises to practice are isometric split squats, heel elevated and regular, quarter squats, isometric single leg holds, and single leg bridge holds. Lastly, we have aerobic or cardiovascular endurance training. 
which in the strength and conditioning world and in skating gets a bad rep. Everyone hates cardio. Oftentimes you'll hear it's a waste of time, it's bad for your joints, it's gonna kill your strength gains, whatever. If you're a skater thinking this way, let me just share this clip with you from Dr. Andy Calvin. Okay, it's probably not that big a deal unless the, the movement is heavily eccentric based, the volume is very high, you're trying to maximize muscle growth and energy is not controlled. If that's not all the case, interference effect is probably not something most people should worry about. Um, when you, especially when you compare that against the well-roundedness that you need for total physiological health. Probably not a big deal. So yeah, a little bit of cardio training is not gonna all of a sudden turn you into this dude. And it comes with like a billion benefits, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's flip it around real quick. I want you to ask yourself, how can you do some cardio training during your week without absolutely hating it? You can choose running, swimming, biking, pushing around on a skateboard. Let me repeat that one pushing around on a skateboard. All you need roughly per week is like two hours of a combination of low intensity mixed with some moderate to high intensity cardio training. So if you skate more than two hours per week and you actually keep your heart rate up during your sessions, you've already got the low intensity cardio covered. All you really need to do is like 10 to 30 minutes of moderate to high intensity training to experience some great physiological benefits that will without a doubt help your skating. Add in some sprints to your warmups choose one day we're just going to dedicate like 20 minutes to an interval run or just go on a damn jog and just randomly pick your pace up at times be creative it doesn't really matter just get moving some amazing benefits from just a little bit of cardio include lowered resting heart rate an increase of red blood cell production an increase of capillary density and skeletal muscle etc all of these benefits will help with that atp recycling process and will increase your stamina when you're on the board. This will allow you to skate longer each day, sustain a higher output during each session, and it'll allow you to recover faster. All from a little bit of cardio, why the f not? So in summary, improving your aerobic capacity, isometric strength, and muscular endurance will without a doubt help your skateboarding. All you gotta figure out is how you can add these training sessions into your life without sacrificing skate sessions, time with your loved ones, work, school, all your priorities. Don't worry if your workouts are perfect or not, you don't need an individualized strength and conditioning program to experience growth. All you gotta do is put in consistent effort and work. Run early in the morning before school or work. Use any spare time you have and invest that into your body. If you're serious about skating, this won't even feel like a sacrifice. It's all part of the fun. You can thank me later when you feel better than you've ever had on your board. All right though, that is enough preaching for one video. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this topic. If you have any recommendations, feel free to comment below or shoot me a DM on my Instagram, Skate Athletics. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.